So our next section is going to be on decimal operations, uh, converting between decimals and fractions and percents. So kind of an introduction to percents. The key when adding decimals is actually this key is uh, for adding and subtracting decimals is just like adding and subtracting fractions. We have to line up the values, uh, which means they need to be the same size parts. I can't add tenths to hundredths. I can't add pennies to quarters or dimes to dollars. Um, we have to line up the place values. I should add that word. The place values. So that we line up the same values. So I would not add 3.21 to 5.2. That's utter nonsense. We'd be adding tenths to hundreds. What we do is we would line up the decimals and then we'd line up the whole numbers with the whole numbers, tenths with the tenths, hundreds with the hundreds, adding only the same size values, just like we did the fractions. Uh, below this uh, one, we don't have anything here, so we could put 5.20, and then we just add those straight down. So we're looking at one, four, eight. Feel free, like we did before, this is something where we're gonna be using our technology, 3.21 plus uh, 5.2, and it will automatically line up those values for us, okay? 15.26 uh, minus 8.941. Once again, 15.26. Do not put 8941 because the decimals don't line up. So we line up those place values, 8.941. This time the zero goes after the six. I can't do zero minus one, so we regroup that. 10 minus 1, 5 minus 4, 2 minus 9, 12 minus 9, 14 minus 8, so how about 6.319? And like I said, feel free to use your technology. It's not hurting my feelings. Uh, we can also have mixtures, which means we need to go from left to right when I've added and subtracting. So do not make this 3.2 minus and then 1.6 plus 10. You do the subtracting first. 3.2 minus 1.6. Give you a second to put that in. Should give you 1.6 plus 10 is not 2.6. 1.6 plus 10 should give us 11.6. 3.2 minus 1.6 plus 10. 3.2 minus 1.6 plus 10. Feel free to use technology. What if I'm multiplying 3.26 times 1.2? Well, this is actually like multiplying with, with uh, fractions. We don't have to have the same values line up. What we do is we take that 3.26 times 1.2 and we multiply by no like normal. 12, carry the 1, 4, 5, 6 here. And then we add a placeholder, everything times 1, 6, 2, 3, about 2, 11, 9. And then what we do is we find out how many numbers are past the decimal. And it looks like there are three and so we move the decimal in our answer three times to 3.912 now I'm going to be doing this with technology 3.26 times 1.2 and we have 3.912 Okay, so and the reason I do this is because our next one, I don't want to have three digit multiplication and three rows and all that. That's not really the point of this class. We should be able to take 11.15 times 5.89, but keep in mind at the end, since I see four numbers past the decimal, I'm expecting in my answer the decimal to move four digits over. 11.15, 5.89. Eleven point one five, five point eight nine. That looks good. 
about 65, 6, 7, 35. And notice the decimal, we had four numbers move. Now be careful, because the next one I see two numbers past the decimal. So I'm thinking it's going to move twice at the end. 3.35 times 2. But I end up with just 6.7. You're like, well, I thought we were supposed to have two numbers. Well, we do, because if we had multiplied 3.35 times 2 manually, 10, 7, 6, and then when it moved twice, there would be a 0 there. So be careful. Yes, there are two numbers past the decimal. One of them just isn't written. Um, I would want my answer to be just the 6.7. Um, unless we're dealing with money, then 6.70 would make sense. Dividing, how do we divide? Well, we divide like normal, 3.26 divided by 2. 2 into 3, bring down, 2 into 12, multiply and bring down, 2 into 6. And then what ends up happening is our decimal from our question here gets brought up to 1.63. What if I'm not dividing by a whole number, though? What if I'm dividing by a decimal? Well, then what we do is we basically make that 0.4 into a whole number by moving it once. And because we do that by what we're dividing by, we do it to the 5.18. So now I divide 4 into 5. Bring down. 4 into 11. Bring down. 4 into 38. So he's like, oh, this goes on forever. No, just keep going. 4 into, there's 2 left. Bring down a 0. 4 into 20. Goes in evenly. Obviously, that's a mess, but I'm going to shrink it here. And I'm sure you can all do that too. But the idea is if there's no number to bring down, we bring a zero down. Um, but it worked. We got, um, well, the decimal moves up, so 12.95. But keep in mind, I'm asking you to, to uh, be able to handle this understanding kind of decimal rules. But ultimately, we have 3.26 divided by 2. We have access to technology. Ultimately, when I do... 5.18 divided by 0.4. We have access to technology. Okay. How do I turn a decimal into a fraction? Well, it has to do with place value. And we've already had a time and we've kind of written out our place values. Um, so this is 3 after the whole numbers. This is 3 in the tenths place. 3 tenths. Well, close your eyes. I'm going to keep saying 3 tenths, and I'd like you to picture a fraction. 3 tenths. What does that look like? How about 3 over 10? It's that easy. Next one is a 4 in the what? 4 tenths hundredths. What would that look like as a fraction? 4 over now, why if I type that in, does it mark it wrong this time? Well, you have to simplify these. So I have to be able to know that the 3 and the 10 are not divisible by anything, so except 1, and you know, so that's simplified. But 4 and 100 are both even, which makes them both divisible by... So how about 2 over 50? Still not done. So how about 1 over 25? 3.2 gets a little more complicated, but I see that as 3 and 2 tenths. Definitely would simplify the fraction first. So how about 3 and 1 fifth? I'm fine with that. But if I wanted it as a fraction, we would need to be able to do the multiply and add. 15 plus 1, 16 fifths. What about 15 and 965 tenths, hundred, thousands. Well, 
and we'd have to start simplifying that and then do the whole multiplying and add. I, there has to be an easier way here, right? Well, 3 and 2 tenths, or what was it? Uh, yeah, 3.2. We can get some technology that will turn that number into a fraction. And why do I want to be able to do that? Because I don't want to take 15.965 and turn it into this number and can simplifying it. So 15.965 is 3,193 over 200. Thirty-one ninety-three. Make sure I didn't mess that up. Okay. And I can always go back and say, let me verify that. If I turn it back into a decimal, oops. All right. I can do this. It should still be fifteen point nine six five. Okay. Well, how do I change a fraction to a decimal? We've actually done this before. This literally means division. So we just have 4 divided by 5, which we've done. 5 doesn't go into 4. We add the decimal in 0. 5 goes into 40 8 times. So just 0.8. Feel free to use your technology. Ten ninths gets a little trickier if I do that by hand, because 9 goes into 10 one time with one left over, makes that a 10, 9 goes into 10 one time, with one left over, 9 goes into 10 one time, with one, see this is going to go on forever, so we would either round it off to 1.11, that would be approximate, or they might have you write it as 1.1 with a line over it telling us that one repeats. 43 divided by 8. 8 goes into 43 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40, leaving us with 3. We're not done. Decimal 0. 8 into 30, 8, 16, 24 would be times 3. Leaves us with 6. Sounds like this is complicated. Put a line over it. No, there's no repeating yet. Decimal 0. 8 into 60. 8 times 8 is 64, so how about 8 times 7 is 56. Who's running out of room here? Let's see. There we go. Bring another zero down. Eight into 40. Oh, look, it did end. So bringing it up, 5.375. Keep in mind again, we have access to technology. How do I turn a percent to a fraction? Well, it's actually built into the name. Percent literally means per divide cent, a hundred. A century is a hundred years. There are a hundred pennies or a hundred cents in a dollar. Cent means a hundred. Centimeter, there are a hundred centimeters in a meter. Cent means 100. 32 percent literally means 32 per 100. So we divide that. We simplify it. 32 and 100 are both divisible by 2. So how about 16 over 50? Still both even, so dividing them by 2 gives me 8 over 25. 150 per cent, 150 per 100 would be 150 over 100. Simplifying that, I'm going to see they're both divisible by 10 to give me 15 over 10. I'm going to see those are both divisible by about 5 to give us 3 over 2. 1.5%, that's a little trickier because that is 1.5 over 100. 
The problem is I don't want a decimal in my fraction. So we multiply the top and bottom by 10 to give me 15 over 1,000. Now when I simplify that by dividing it by what, 5, I'm looking at 3 over 200. That's not our only option. I, once again, have access to technology. I can do 1.5 divided by 100. 1.5 divided by 100, which helps me see that 15 uh, thousandths, and then I can have my technology turn that back into a fraction for me. How do I go from a decimal to a percent? Well, we move the decimal twice. Why? Because this is three hundredths. And three hundredths is three per cent. Three percent. The rule, we move the decimal two places to the, the right. Taking that decimal, if we move it twice, we get three. Keep in mind the answer is not three, the answer is three percent. 1.1 is not 11 percent. If I move that decimal two times to the right, I get 110 or 110 percent. Nine is not nine percent, it's not 90 percent. If I take the decimal, nine has a decimal at the end of it, and I move it two times to the right, I end up with 900%. Somebody always says, well, wait a second, that's impossible. You can't have more than 100%. You've never bought a wedding ring then. Because wedding ring jewelry in general, they will mark up 300, 400%. They buy it for $500. They sell it to you for $1,500 or $2,000. They mark it up over 100%. You can't give more than 100%. 100% is all of something. But they do mark up things above 100%. So don't freak out about that. How do I go from a fraction to a percent? Well, there's a couple options. We know percent means per 100. So I can figure out what this would be to become 100. I could multiply uh, the 5 and make it 100 by multiplying it by 20. So that would give me 80 per 100, or 80%. Problem is, we won't always be able to do that. And so I would encourage you, um, from fractions to percents, the, the, the kind of approach that's going to always work is that we go from the fraction to the decimal, which I can do doing, using technology. 4 divided by 5 is 0 0.8. And then I go from the decimal to the percent by moving it twice and getting 80%. 3 tenths, I can make that times 10 times 10, 30 per 100 or 30%. But I would encourage you to be able to make that into a decimal. 3 tenths is 0 0.3. Move that decimal twice to give you what? 30%. 8 ninths, I can't make that over 100. 9 times what is 100? It ain't pretty. It's not going to be helpful. So this method doesn't always work, which is why I told you. Use the technology. What is 8 divided by 9? Forever. And what we'll generally do is we'll take it either to the nearest percent. So this is 88.888%, which we would round up to 89%. Or we might do it to the tenths of a percent, which would be 88.9%. couple options depending on what they tell you to round it to. But notice in both of these situations, I wasn't able to make it over 100. So that's why, as a general rule, if I'm given a fraction, I turn it to a decimal, can then turn that to a percent. So that's it. It's just a quick overview of some decimal operations, conversions, 
Um, get used to using your technology quickly and accurately.